In the third video of our three-part kitchen drawing series, we will be adding dimensions and a border and title block to our kitchen drawing. So we'll open up DesignCAD and the kitchen drawing. This is where we left off in video two. In order to draw the dimensions, we're going to have to zoom out a little bit or at least scroll the image down so that we can begin drawing our dimensions on the outside walls. Now, the first and probably the most hardest part of dimensioning is selecting the size of your dimension and, and basically setting up the tool. So this is your dimensioning tool here. Now, if we select that, this little box shows up, and I'll just put that in the center. We want this to be set at automatic. Click on text. I'll put that over top. Our format has to be the bottom option. It, these are just examples of what the dimensioning text will look like. Precision, we're going to leave it here, but if that's too precise, we're going to change that later. We can always change it later. In fact, I'm actually not even sure what we're going to be setting everything to. I'm going to set everything up and then go back and set it so it looks appropriate. So I haven't and this is very typical with drawings. You'll, you'll just set this up, you'll start dimensioning, and if it's incorrect, you'll go back and set it all up again. So I'm just going to just look at these. My dimension text size might be a little bit big at 0.3. Maybe we're going to change that to 0.2 for now. Save, close. Now you might want to just um, watch me the, you know, go through this, and then later I'm going to go back and just double check and show you what I set everything up to. This should be none and none, prefix suffix. Arrowhead, my width is zero, that's correct. My position is auto, that's correct. Size 0.2, that will match my text. Save, close. Oh, go back into arrowhead. This is your arrowhead options. I like the third one here, which is about one, two, three, four, five down. That's my favorite, but you can pick one that's uh, one that you like. Save, close. Extension and overshoot. These should generally be the same. Let's just keep everything at point two for now. And I'll explain what overshoot and gap are in a second. Save, close. Tolerancing, you don't touch. So we're not going to go in there. Now, I'm just going to pull a dimension by going right click, right click. And I'm going to pull that up. And I can see right away that my dimensioning size is a little bit small. So while I'm dimensioning, I can change some things here. So let's change our text right away, and we're going to change that to 0.3. I think that's where it was before. Save, close. And let's see if it changed our extension. Yeah, see, it automatically changes extension to match my text to 0.3. And that's more like it. So I'm just going to, I'm just going to put this here for now and explain what the different parts of these dimensions are. This is your dimension line and it contains your dimension and it's terminated by arrowheads. Now these arrowheads on both sides are um, basically pointing at an extension line. The extension line extends from your drawing and should not touch your drawing whenever possible it should not touch your drawing. So that's what this gap is here, that's the point three. This is the overshoot which is usually the same as the gap at point three. The distance between your drawing and your dimension line is going to remain standard throughout. And we're going to pick, let's look at my sample drawing, I think we're going to pick 6 inches. So let's redo that one now that we have it set up correctly. I'm going to delete it and show you how to set that to 6 inches. To do that, reselect the dimensioning tool, right click, right click, and now we're going to go point relative, so the quotation marks, X is zero, Y is going to be six inches, and it's six inches up on the Y axis. And what that means, after I press enter, it means that this distance here is six inches. Now, we are not going to dimension the window, because generally in floor plans, we uh, will put a symbol like a W1, W2 for the windows, D1, D2, etc. for the doors and so forth, and then we'll have a window and door schedule where we will put all of the information that we need. We will dimension this side here. Again, the same way, I'm going to grab the dimensioning tool, right-click, right-click. Now instead of using point relative, 
I can simply right click to this dimension point here and it will be in line with that dimension. Now the second layer is going to give me the overall dimension of this wall. And I, of course, with simple math, I'll be able to find out the size of this window if I really wanted it. Get the dimensioning tool, and we are always clicking to the object line, so that's right click. And over to the other side, right click. Now this time I'm going to set my point relative, so the quotation key, to one, one foot. So six inches and six inches equals one foot. And what that does is the distance from your object line now to the dimension line is one foot, which means I have equal six inches in between my dimension lines, which makes it nice, neat, and tidy. So I'm going to scroll that up. Actually, I'm going to fit to screen. And then I'm going to scroll over, and we're going to do the same here. Now, there's no window or door to dimension to, so we're going to just dimension that wall by selecting our dimension tool, snapping to the ends of the wall, hitting point relative, and going negative, six inches. Tab takes me to the next line where I can go zero and then I'll press OK. And that takes, I don't like this, I don't like this dimension touching here. So I'm going to change this. Now if I double click on this I might be able to do it this way. Text position, vertical position, above, below, outside, text position. Hmm. I don't know if this will do it. Force text horizontal inside, outside. I'm sure it's one of these, and now I'm forgetting which one it is. Hmm. Well, that's not. I don't think those are the ones that are letting me flip it. Position. Nope. Let's go and delete this and see if we can fix this right in the dimensioning tool itself. In text options, orientation, let's try normal here. That's what I'm looking for, normal. Save and close and let's see if that helps us. Right click, right click and yes, you can see that the dimension is now sideways. So now I'm going to go point relative, type in my uh, negative six inches. It's already set to negative 0.5, so I'm just going to allow it to do that because that's what six inches is. And that's much better. I do not want my dimensions touching the object line if I, if I can help it. Now the th next thing I'm going to do, I'll close this info box now, fit to screen. I'm not going to bother dimensioning anything inside. Now the PDF file that I have posted in Esme has all the dimensions of the sinks and the dishwashers and the islands and, and all of this, but that at this point is not important. So we're not going to bother doing all those extra dimensions. If you want, you're welcome to do that and place those dimensions on there, especially if you just want to check that everything's correct. I will be checking myself when you uh, forward this document to me. But this is all we would need on for dimensions on your on your kitchen plan. Now I'm going to take and draw a border and title block. To do that I'm going to select the zoom out button and give myself a little bit of space around. And I'm simply going to take and draw some lines. I think we're going to just use freehand lines to go around. So we're going to start here. We're going to left click approximately here. Now this is well, I'm not going to give you any dimensions for this. Left click, and I'm going to keep my, I think I'm going to make this about here, and then I think I'm going to snap. No, it won't let me snap. Hmm, 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 that won't work. Freehanding never works for me. Let me, let me try it a different way. We're going to left click, left click, leaving some white space around, press enter. Now, we're going to snap to this point, go across, left click, press enter, and I'm going to copy and paste this line and put it on the other side. Control C, Control V, and I can move that in place by just going right click, right click, right click. Now these are the same lengths, zoom to fit the screen, and I'm just going to connect the bottom like so. 
Now the reason I didn't just take the box drawing tool like this and just draw a box is because I want to parallel the bottom of this. So let's refresh that and that's looking pretty good. I want to take and parallel the bottom line. So let's just take and get my parallel tool. We're going to type in one foot, one foot, and left click and go down, left click. I'm going to scroll up and I'm just going to cap these off with my line drawing tool. Now the outside is called my border and the bottom is called my title block. The border and title block are bolded. They're a little bit heavier than the object lines. Um, so what we're going to do is just double click on them and we're going to change our scale. No, we're going to change our line width. Let's see here to 0.1 maybe. Yeah. 0.1. Oh, I don't know what else we're going to have. We're going to run into here. 0.1. Yep. Okay. So what I'm finding now is see how this is not linked to that. When I zoom into here. Okay. There we go. I have this problem. So to fix that, we have to link these back up. So I'm going to click on this. I'm going to click on, hold down shift, click here, click here, and click on these bottom lines as well. I wonder if that's going to work. Edit, selection edit, combine lines. Okay, now when I double click on these, or when I hold it down, it's a single line. And I can change my line width to 0.1. Try that again. Yeah, so now my corners are nice and even. I don't have the to the gap right there. Now this one here, I should be able to still parallel it because it's a different line. So I'm going to scroll that up. I don't want to make that dark just yet. I'm going to parallel that for my construction lines or my guidelines, I guess they're called, for my lettering. My lettering, how big is my lettering going to be? Probably similar to my F on my D on my dishwasher and fridge. So that's going to be uh, 0.3. So let's maybe do the lettering first before I do this and just double check if that's going to work. Yes, so that, that is 0.5, which is half an inch. So 0.5 is what I have that set to. I, I thought it was 0.3, but it's 0.5, which is half an inch, which is 6 inches. Now what I have here is 12 inches. So if I have 12 inches and I subtract 6 inches, that gives me 6 inches of leftover space. I want to have 3 inches on the bottom, 3 inches on the top. Or I can parallel this 3 inches down and another 6 inches. So grab the parallel tool, type in three inches. You probably you might have to pause the video or go back and, and check it out. And I'm going to parallel that down. And now I'm going to set this to six inches for the size of my lettering. Now this lettering will fit into there. This one here, I can double click on it and make it the line width of 0.1. This is where my lettering goes. These are called guidelines for my lettering. I'm going to just zoom in again. It's not quite big enough. Let's zoom in now. Nope. Let's zoom in like this. There we go. Now you can see it better. So in this bottom portion, I'm going to put my name, the title, the grade, and the period. Using this tool right here, I will put in Mr. in capital letters. Cardinal, and I'm just going to place that along those guidelines. I might have to move it later. I'm going to place it once it goes kind of pink on the top and the bottom of the letter. I 
Mouse doesn't want to dance here for me. Come on. There it is. Press Enter. And now I'm going to put Kitchen Plan. And that is going to be centered approximately here. Once I have it placed, it's easy to move left and right. I just want to get it exactly on that line. That line needs to turn pink. It's usually easier to zoom in. There it is. And last but not least, grade and period. So this is a grade 10 project. So grade 10. And we will period 2. And this can go over here. Now that I can see that this bedroom, this kitchen plan is centered, I can now center this in the remaining space approximately here. There we go. And press enter. If I need to move something, I can hold down the shift key and move it along the x-axis without it going up and down while I move it with the mouse. So I'm just going to move that over a little bit. And I'm simply going to draw a line from top to bottom here by getting my line drawing tool getting my line snap tool and a little box will show up on the line I'm just to guesstimate halfway and left click and then go down and I need to go grab the line snap tool again and left click and enter and I'll do the same over here get the line drawing tool get the line snap tool because remember my right click is a point snap so line snap you have to actually go get the line snap tool so I click once I've clicked and selected I go and get the line snap again so I can line snap to the bottom and enter. That's a left click tool. Double click on these lines, change them to point 1 for thickness as well as this one to point 1. And in fact these are just guidelines so they're just there temporarily so we delete those. And I'm going to close this and fit to screen. So basically you want to have your kitchen plan floating in the middle of this open space. You want to have some white space around here. Uh, this is, you get to use a little bit of your artistic license for this one, I guess. There's no specific dimensions other than the size of your font and the distance in between your um, title block. Okay. And this would be considered, oh no, this is not considered a final final project yet. I have not labeled the window and the door, so we have to do that next. So, grab the text tool, type in W1 in capital letters, place that, that's too big, 0.5, isn't it? Or no, is it? That's the same as the F, yep. And that goes right here. Oh no, I'm not liking that. That's way too big. Now I know my font size is 0.3 for my dimensions. Let's see what that looks like. Yeah, that's better. And we're going to just left click that so that it's in the center of the window and in line with the dimensions and then press enter. And we'll do the same for the door. D1. So select and enter okay now if I take a look back I think I am happy with this drawing it is completed and uh, once you're done you can you can send this to me for marking but I, I think that that puts a wrap on the third video of the series so thanks for watching and enjoy the rest of your day